We're all familiar with Kekrock. It's a lost game that has been the highlight of the lost media community. I, myself, have desired this game to be found. I love Kekrock, there's no denying it. But how much Kekrock knowledge do you know? How deep does the Kekrock lore go? Today, I found out that I could poorly render my own iceberg image in Blender, and thus I applied all the Kekrock lore I could find into it. Today, we're diving into the Kekrock Iceberg. Rock Around the Croc Rock Around the Croc is the text seen on the cover of the video game. It's supposedly a line from the game made to convey how positive it is, and it's a spin on the phrase Rock Around the Clock. Many consider this phrase to be Kekrock's catchphrase, as when Kekrock does something outstanding, he would begin to rock around the croc. Many also say it is the name of a little dance that Kekrock performs on screen when completing a level, however many dispute this claim, claiming that, you know, Kekrock can't dance. He, uh, he has no legs. Hi, I'm Kekrock. A line spoken by Kekrock in one of the only found sound bites of the game, Hi, I'm Kekrock, is rumored to be the opening line you would hear when booting up the game. It was an instantly recognizable line, however, no one has been identified as Kekrock's voice actor. Booting up the game to hear the loud and fuzzy sound bite was said to have scared many kids who were playing. This was actually a direct factor that led to many of the copies being returned to stores, and when 1994 rolled around, the game was re-released with a sticker on the cover that read, Family Friendly, He's Cat Rock. Sega Genesis The Sega Genesis is a console that was released in 1988 for Japan and 1989 for North America. It's listed as the main console for the release of Kekrock in 1993, although the game has been said to have been ported to different consoles. The Genesis logo can be seen on the left side of the game's cover art, and despite being ported to different consoles, the majority of Kekrock players uh, claim to have primarily played on the Sega Genesis, which is why the box art cover for the Genesis is so easy to find. Many video game collectors today consider the box art covers for other ports to be extremely rare and extremely valuable. Toilet Plunger in the game, Kekrock's main item of defense is a toilet plunger. It's unknown as to why that was chosen, however many believe it to be a reference to the Super Mario franchise as Mario and Luigi are known as plumbers. Kekrock is said to be able to plunge his enemies away, as well as whack them and beat them unconscious. It's unexplained as to where the Kekrock gets this plunger, but many consider it not important to the Kekrock storyline as a whole. To me, however, it tells me one thing. There is a plumbing system in the world of Kekrock. 1993. 1993 is supposedly the year of release for Kekrock. It was also the same year that Bill Clinton was inaugurated as the 42nd President of the United States. Coincidence? <sighs> Clearance Sale Many who had copies or had seen copies of Kekrock had claimed that the game was often found in clearance sales in everyday retail shops. This is mainly because of how bad the game was said to have been, many stores were only able to receive one shipment of the game, and due to the items barely selling, they requested suppliers not to send more. The games would later be put into clearance, and after that, unsold copies were sent back to the suppliers by various retail stores. V-Board V-Board is the video game board of the website 4chan where the game was first mentioned online. The thread on the board featured many individuals recounting their memories regarding the game. Each story varies, but they are all generally the same about some funny crocodile named Kekrock going on an adventure in a strange and unique world to fight against Toasty. Bad Controls The game was said to have had really bad controls when playing throughout the various levels, with one claim saying that they were unable to complete Toasty's castle due to how incredibly terrible the controls were. I'm not sure to what extent the controls functioned, especially with the game being for the Sega Genesis later ported onto other consoles, but I can't imagine that if you're unable to beat a level, it must be pretty bad. Games Greeting A lot of games have a unique opening and startup, like how Super Mario 64 plays a quick little jingle when the logo appears and the game starts. It was basically said that when Kekrock would load up, it would load a short animation of Kekrock hopping around, only to turn to the screen and greet the player with Hi, I'm Kekrock, his iconic catchphrase. Box Art Origin 
No one really knows who designed the box art, and no one has seen the back of the box. It would help the search a lot if people were able to identify any credits listed on the back of the box, or even an artist from the company. Uh, but unfortunately, no one can really be asked about the box art either, due to it appearing on the anonymous internet board 4chan. No gameplay footage. Due to the obscurity of the game, there is no gameplay footage whatsoever online. There have been a few recreations, but none of the actual game. A few cutscenes surface, but no one is able to confirm the validity of their existence. And, you know, I can assume that capturing the gameplay back during the initial release was hard enough, but after people would play through the terrible thing, everyone would just toss it aside because of how bad it was, thus leading to a complete lack of gameplay online. Crocodollers. Throughout the game, Kakarot can collect crocodollers. It's currently unknown what they could be used for, although judging by the year of the game's development, probably not much. I doubt you could buy anything with them, so they were most likely used for collecting more points. However, it may have functioned a bit like Pokemon with the in-game shop items and whatnot, but I honestly don't see a reason for Kakarot having to buy Pokeballs. Kekrock UFO Plush 1994 The Kekrock UFO Plush was a plush made in 1994, and it's displayed on the Kekrock Wix site under the merchandise column. It was never released commercially, and only these prototypes of the plush exist. I have no idea who took the images and how they got their hands on the prototype, but bravo for them for becoming a staple in Kekrock's online history. Unlicensed. Kekrock was an unlicensed game. It's not uncommon for unlicensed games to have a huge following, especially since Kekrock in 1993 was the start of the franchise. It's just strange that an unlicensed game would just one day go missing and never surface again, or at the very least have the ROM dumped online. I can only assume that the reason for this is due to the game being so horrible. Screenshots. Strangely enough, only very limited screenshots from the game exist online, with some depicting high quality gameplay while others show off clunky, broken, and glitched scenarios that make it impossible to complete Kakarot's journey. Oh boy, and not to mention that most of these screenshots, which is a term I'm using very loosely here, were just pictures from cameras taken in front of a television. Oh boy. Toasty's Castle Toasty is the main villain of Kekrock, and his castle is one of the levels along the journey. It resembles one really big toaster, hence his name, and has four iron pillars outside which have crocodollers on top of each one. The inside was a giant mechanical room which had really big red hot wires that stretched across the wall. You can jump on them as platforms when they aren't red, however Toasty would yell, SMELLS TOASTY, and the wires would instantly heat up, turning them red and hurting Kekrock. Hat. Kekrock wears an iconic yellow sun hat, presumably made out of straw, which can be seen on every character design of him and on all of his merchandise. I think there was a plan to sell some yellow Kekrock brand sun hats at one point, however I don't think that was ever completed due to the various high ambitions that the team had, and I think the project for it was ultimately just scrapped. Fan games. There are various fan games existing online for the game, due to the lack of the official one, and various fans have set out to create games based on what they remember of it, or of what people have claimed there to be. There are a lot of great ambitious projects that have come from it, and I really recommend people to play some of them because they are pretty fun. Soundtrack. From all the claims online about the existence of Kakarok, no one talks about the game's soundtrack. It's generally unknown what kind of soundtrack the game had, many speculate it to have had none, uh, due to how obscure the game's production was. So far, however, no one has been credited to it. It honestly just seems to be a reoccurring theme here. NES port. People who have played Kekrock have said to have played it across many different consoles, yet the only existing box art image of the game was for the Sega Genesis. It's been said that the game was ported to different consoles in an attempt to boost sales, and one of those consoles was the NES. Many believe that this might not have been possible, as the graphics would just be too complicated. However, when it comes to Kekrock, anything is possible. Kekrock Figure Prototype 
Similar to the UFO plush, this one comes from the merchandise page on that Kekrock Wix site. It's freshly printed and ready to go. This figure actually has limbs and shows Kekrock in a position similar to dancing. Perhaps he's rocking around the croc. It's a great figure, although relatively small, and I would honestly love to get my hands on it. Congrats to the person who got it and stapling themselves into Kekrock history. L Supersonic Q L Supersonic Q is a YouTube channel that has become popular for his clay sculptures and lost media. He first mentioned Kekrock in his lost media video surrounding it, however the presence of Kekrock has become a bit of a joke around his channel. He helped provide some entries for this iceberg and is an overall good guy who is actually selling Kekrock shirts, so head over to his channel if you're interested in that. I have one, and it is great. Yoshi's Story Connection Yoshi's Story was a game that came out on the Nintendo 64 in late 1997. Many have noted similarities between the game and Kekrock as both are games following some weird green reptile on an adventure. A lot of people say that Yoshi's Story is like a better version of Kekrock, with good controls, a tangible story, and a funny green protagonist. Toasty is in another castle. Upon arriving in the castle in the Gator Gates level, you'll be greeted with a small piece of bread which says, Sorry Kekrock, Toasty is in another castle. This is obviously a reference to Super Mario, with the quote of Peach being in another castle, so Kekrock is very aware of other games and is paying tribute to them. Kekrock Ice Cream Everyone loves ice cream, including Kekrock, which is why at the very end of the game you can register all your points and all your crocodollars for a giant bowl of ice cream. If you don't take that ice cream, however, you get a screen of Kekrock sitting at an empty dining room table with the words NO ICE CREAM above him. I, I don't even know why that exists. Nobody knows why this is in the game. Uh, maybe ice cream was originally going to play a bigger role in the story. I, I, I don't know. Kekrock 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 is a YouTube channel that had uploaded the soundbite of Kekrock telling the player hi and introducing himself. At the time of writing this, the video is 5 years old and has 43,000 views. Nobody knows who runs the channel, and this is their only available video, so there isn't exactly much to work with. Kekrock Soda Originally, a new soft drink company was being licensed during the production of the game. It had signed an agreement to produce Kekrock related soft drinks called Gulp Croc, which was this nasty lemon lime grapefruit stuff with some other unknown chemicals. The company subsequently went out of business, partly because the Kekrock publishers did not have enough to pay out their deal, and partly because the soft drink was killing the monkeys they were experimenting with, so... Cancelled TV Show The company behind Kekrock had apparently registered the series for development on a TV show, with the first season regarding the adventures of Kekrock in the first level. It's believed that as the show would develop and go on, each season would be the next level of the game. However, it was all scrapped when the animation studio backed out of the project last minute, due to the horrendous sales numbers of the game. And, you know, between you and me, I don't blame them. 4chan 4chan is an anonymous messaging board where the first online presence of Kekrock originated. It was on the video game discussion board, and from there, people talked about their experiences playing the game in their past. It was truly magical, and that's where a lot of our understanding of the game comes from. Cutscenes. It was said that throughout the game, there are several cutscenes that depict the story of Kekrock. This would have been hard to do given the budget of the company and how convoluted and broken the story is altogether. Once again, the claims of these cutscenes have not been verified. Snow Croc. It was said that in the level Snowy Drops and Crocs, if you were able to stand on top of the mountain and use a snowball power-up at the top of the slide, you would be able to turn yourself into a massive snowball as the slide progressed, and at the very bottom, you would be a very white and cold Kekrock, thus unlocking Snowcrock. Crude Art Crude art is a reference to the art that was shown inside the game and on the box of the Genesis release. It's shown to be poorly drawn, and in the game, the art is all pixely and broken up. It was said that you could use cartridge tipping to fix the scenes, but that would make Kekrock scream in-game and he wouldn't stop until you fixed it, almost like he was in pain. No Limbs Many people who have experienced Kekrock have argued over the existence of Kekrock having limbs. 
it's a strange argument, but it stems from the box art of him just being a cylinder. However, many have said that in-game, he has the limbs of a strong lumberjack. And you also have to consider, what about that prototype figure? And then you also have to consider again the UFO plush. It seems that some parts of Kakarok have limbs, and some parts don't. It's just a really weird mixture, and I, I really don't know why people would argue about this in the first place. Kakarok Anatomy Many argue about the anatomy of Kakarok, as some promos, like the box art, show him as just a green cylinder with a head and hat. Many argue that in the game, he has hands and feet, as how else is he supposed to hold his toilet plunger? But even with limbs, you have to wonder how Kakarok's anatomy truly works, as his eyes are almost larger than his skull. At what point does the eye connect to the socket? He doesn't have teeth, so how does he chew? Is this a beak? Nobody will ever know. Kakarok Oreos Companies banking in on food isn't a rare occurrence. When I was a kid, I used to eat this Mario Brothers shaved mac and cheese. Coolest stuff out there. If you're involved in the food collecting scene, you understand that for some reason, people value food that is linked with media at an extremely high price. Just look at the McDonald's Szechuan sauce Rick and Morty promotion, or these damn McNuggets that look like Among Us that sell for literal hundreds of dollars on eBay. In 1997, Kakarok was supposed to partner with Oreos, similar to the whole Mewtwo Oreo stuff, but they backed out last minute in favor of their own self-made cookie cracker thing. As far as I know, or as far as anyone knows at that point, they never released them, and apparently the Food and Drug Administration got involved, and that might be the main reasoning as to why the company stopped making their own Oreo off-brand thing with Kakarok's face on it, but, you know, what do I know? Kakarok in Pixels Pixels was a movie about the video game world coming to reality. It was released in 2015, years after the Kakarok series became public. The movie had all kinds of popular video game characters on it, with the main cover of the movie even featuring the one and only Pac-Man. People who had worked at select cinemas who had access to the movie claimed that during the movie, Kakarok had appeared as a quick cameo, saying, Hi, I'm Kakarok, before exploding into various pixels, like what happens in the game. The final release of the movie, however, did not feature the scene. Why it was removed, I have no idea. Kekrock.wixsite.com The website builder Wix launched in 2006, just a few years after the release of Kekrock to the public. It seemed that during the mid to late 2000s, a small group of individuals were interested in reviving the franchise and made a website, Kekrock.wixsite.com. The website has all sorts of Kekrock information, and even information on the scrapped second game for the franchise. This website has information about the merchandise like the UFO plush and scrapped prototype figurines. I have no idea where this small group of individuals went, but no one has heard from them in a very long time. The Afterlife if you die in the game, a sprite of Kekrok is either seen ascending to the heavens or being yanked into the underworld. It's unknown as to why he would go to either place. It's rumored that the number of crocodiles you had would affect your place in the afterlife, with little to no crocodiles ascending you and many crocodiles descending you. If you were descended, you would get a disturbing image of Kekrok in fire with a caption that read, You've been greedy. But if you ascended, you would see Kekrok among clouds with a caption that read, The Kingdom of Heaven is Yours. Kekrok Eats Toasty In the game, Toasty is seen as an actual piece of toast. Why he is alive is unknown to me. It was said that the Toasty fight would take place on top of a toaster, and that Kekrok would knock him inside, and then eat Toasty, a gruesome death. I can only assume that this massive toaster that they're on is the Toasty's castle level which is very much probably the end of the game. Kekrok 2 There was a planned Kekrok sequel in development during the release of the first game, however, due to the low sales of the game, the sequel was never developed. It's unknown if it was completely tossed or just stored away by the company just waiting to be found, but from what I've heard, there was a lot of interesting scrapped content, including a new character called Kek Gator. It's unknown what kind of role he would have had, but many think that it might have introduced a multiplayer function to the game, I don't know. Kekrok Summon Ritual It was once written in an ancient document. 
a Google document if you may, that Kakarot could be summoned by using the game cartridge, a crocodile skin wallet, a toilet plunger, and a hat. If the ritual was done in a steam-filled bathroom, the hot steam on the mirror would spell Kakarot three times backwards, ultimately before the lights would shatter and a strange red liquid, maybe crocodile blood, leaks from them in pools on the floor. Kekrok Land Kekrok Land is considered to be the tutorial level of the game, which was ultimately removed from the game before the final release. However, its data can still be found in the various files of the game. From what had been reconstructed, the tutorial level is similar to the opening area in Banjo-Kazooie, with small parts of parkour and collectible sprites to move on to the next level and begin the official game. Skinwalkers Skinwalkers are known as shapeshifting witches in Navajo culture. They often take the form of animals, either through shapeshifting or possession. A few players of the game claim that there is a strange magical property behind the game, and that skinwalkers may be an explanation for that. That also explains why our main character is a crocodile. During the game, high frequencies can be heard, and when examined, they are in a strange language. In addition to that, there are various game files that have the word skinwalker in them. They usually appear next to files with randomly generated names that are mixtures of numbers and letters. I believe Kekrok is an ancient beast. A phrase uttered by many past historians after discovering a strange plate in South America with hieroglyphics that depicts what appears to be gameplay of the Kekrok game, with a deciphered code above the images that reads, I believe Kekrok is an ancient beast. Kekrok became Croc. Many theories have stated that despite Croc getting a separate release, the game was reworked and released as the Argonaut game Croc Legend of the Gobbos. Gobbos are more commonly associated with Scrimblos now, so I guess the game should be called Kekroc Legend of the Scrimblos now. Am I, am I right? Am I? Yeah, whatever. The End The end of the game has never been reached by players, and it's speculated that it was never even finished and the game developers may have made it impossible to be reached. It was said that the final battle was between Kekrok and Toasty, along with Toasty's invention, Metal Kekrok. The fight took place in an area surrounded by lava, and spikes would fall from the ceiling and burst into crocodollers. Outside of that, nobody really knows what else the level would hold, or even the end credits. Skin it's said that within the level Crocodile Isle, there is an unused human flesh texture simply titled Skin. It's unknown what the exact purpose of it is, but for the detail of the texture to be so realistic, it raises a bunch of questions. Many on forums have tried to discuss the skin texture, however, any discussion of it simply goes missing. When trying to interact with the broken texture, the game will crash and your cartridge will no longer be playable. If started up once again, the game shows an eerie image of Kekrok now wearing the skin texture on his body, with his eyes gone and replaced with two small red eyes. Text will appear on screen simply reading, Hi, I'm Skinkrok, along with the player's first and last name with their date of birth and a date of expiration. Kekrok is God In the universe of Kekrok, we follow the gameplay from his perspective. That being said, all we could possibly know is Kekrok himself. We have no idea of what goes on when the screen is not focused on something else. We have no idea that these other characters have feelings or thoughts or anything for that matter. This is a philosophical idea called solipsism, specifically metaphysical solipsism. This means that only one true being can exist, and the external forces around it, the world, people, animals, etc., are nothing more than a non-existent force that revolves around the one true being. By this extent, we can conclude that, if true, Kekrok is the one true being that the universe follows. Without him, his universe cannot exist. Kekrok has created his universe. He is God. Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Matthew 12.28 is a passage from the Bible which reads, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. This version of the verse comes from the King James Version, however, all are similar in the vein of using the Holy Spirit to cast away devils. In ancient history, many myths and legends about demons are present. There are oni, trolls, goblins, and everything in between. 
In ancient Aztec mythology, there is a sea monster that is part crocodile, part fish, and part amphibian. This creature is known as the Pakli. The creature was always hungry and was never satisfied, having a mouth on almost every part of its body. When the creature was eventually defeated by the deity Tezcalapoca, the world was created using his body. This means that the ground beneath everything is the Pakli's body, and its soul may still be present in our world. When the creators of the game started to develop the game, they had ventured out to South America and learned of this legend. They were unable to pronounce the name Sapakli, which would soon be called by them as Kipakli. When they developed the game, they wanted a different name, but wanted to keep that cool crocodile feel to everything, including that cool K sound that they kept pronouncing. So, the creature and project was named Kekrok. Around this time, the Ancient Beast tablet was found, but the creators didn't stop. Perhaps the name of Kekrok was just a coincidence. Perhaps it was fate. When the game was finished, they felt a strange aura about it. They had to distribute all copies as soon as possible just to get it away from them. One employee, however, held onto the master copy and destroyed it before anyone could make more copies. Some believe that that employee is dead. Others say he is in a mental institution. The point is that the game was evil and it corrupted him. Some sort of evil spirit is in our world now. Something we cannot get rid of. And as Shakespeare had once said, Hell is empty and all the devils are here.